All right. Well, thanks everybody for coming. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Microsoft Teams, all things Teams collaboration. We're trying to condense everything there possibly is to know about Microsoft Teams. 30 minutes. So 30? stay with us. That's it. Oh, we need sorry, more time. longer? Yeah, I think we have a little bit longer. Okay, we'll get 45. Yeah, we could, we could we throw up 45? Teams all, all right, day, cool. yeah, actually. So how all many right. of you are on Microsoft Teams at your offices? Oh, awesome. How many want a sticker for your computer because it's like the coolest thing? Yes? Okay, so we'll do this. I'll put some on each thing, on each table. By the way, these are the special edition ones, yes. not the small ones that you get at the booth. These are the special edition ones. These are different. Yes. This shows you that you are a master. Absolutely. Okay, here you go. Yeah. All right, so I have a little funny to store t story to tell you before you get started. You probably have heard, some of you may have heard it, some of you may have not. But I'm going to turn it into a positive. Uh, I had started out ahead of my presentation all ready to go, and Abby and I were working on the presentation. We were ready to go last night. Had a little hiccup. We had, a little, had to, of course, Windows updates on the machine, but some problems. But we got, we got through it. Then went to the social, and uh, getting ready to go out to dinner afterwards, and come back and... My laptop with my, or my bag with my laptop and my iPad and everything gone, completely gone. However, for one thing, the person I think was kind of silly in that they, they're at an IT conference and they took the bag of an IT professional with IT gear in it that has, you know, I don't know, tracking and security. I mean, they basically bought, got some of the fanciest bricks that they've ever seen. Right. So, but on the positive side, to turn it into what we're doing here today, uh, we'll actually be able to use some of the, the mobile functions of Microsoft Teams. I could literally do everything we're doing here from the cell phone that is the only manager of tech that I managed to keep. So, anyway, I just wanted to tell that quick little story. And by the way, yes, I know exactly where my equipment is at. It's across the freeway over here at a little complex, and the police are going to be retrieving it for me. So. All right, moving on. <laughs> so, quick overview. Uh, teams collaboration. We're going to talk about teams collaboration, calling, some useful stuff, some fun stuff, and then we'll have time for Q&A. And I talk pretty fast and loud, and so does Abby. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Abby. But Simmer we both, down. Come yes, on. I know. Yes, well. okay. All right. <laughs> so briefly, uh, we'll talk briefly about uh, MS Teams. So what is a team? A team is a collection of people, content, and tools that work together to produce a business outcome for your company. Everybody has teams. Some of them are permanent, you know, like a department or what have you, and some of them are ad hoc, like you get together to work on a project and then you go across, um, or go back to your relative positions in your company. Microsoft Teams was designed and comes together from different products, but it's designed to work so that People can work together in those groups, and all of their data, all their processes, and everything else can be organized in such a fashion to make it as productive as possible. It's a great way to think about it, too. And um, when I'm talking to CEOs and CFOs at companies, they're like, well, I just don't understand the concept, right? And so when you think about Microsoft Teams, think about it as the platform and how you do business moving forward. How many of you still work from home or have a hybrid environment? Okay, so it's really important when you think about a team, think about it as a department, okay? Don't think about it as a team. And then inside that team, which equals department, inside you have job functionality, okay? So if you're the HR department, inside that department, your channel could be like learning, um, accounting, for example, versus a team is a team, because sometimes that gets confusing. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yep. 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 There's more than one, uh, the old saying, there's more than one way to skin a cat, Sorry, all you cat lovers, I'm, I'm with you. But there's more than one way to do this as well, more than one way to order it. There's yeah. best practices and everything else, but it can work the way you work, ultimately. Absolutely, and you want to avoid what's called team sprawl. Yeah. I like to call it teams throw up, because when you have so many teams, they lose purpose. And so when you're working with Network Center and you're thinking about setting up your Microsoft Teams environment, you want to think about what is the purpose? Do I want everybody in my organization to be able to develop that team? Do I need to have security regulations around it as well? Does it need to be private? Does it need to be public? So those are some things to think about as well. And you can see here that I have a bunch of teams. When I joined Ingram Micro, one of the teams had 85 channels. 
And I was like, oh, wait a minute. We're going to change this, right? right? And so you can see here, in my Ingram Micro Teams channel partner site here, and I'm doing the demo on the surface, you can see I have a bunch of private channels. And that's for everything that doesn't need to be seen by everyone. But everybody who is, in, is invited to this team is part of this general channel. Okay? And then you can see this stuff is for everybody to see. Okay? Absolutely. Um, so a lot of the other ideas, just kind of going back to a general idea, is the providing a seamless move to a digital workspace. The, the idea, it's, it's been happening for quite some time now, but as you'll see from some of the things we've talked about with the Peterson Seeds this morning, a lot of their stuff, the workflows and all those things have been kind of started to be funneled through Teams. Some of the app dev stuff this morning, they are talking about using the Teams back end for things like approvals and workflow. Also things like integration with native apps. There's a lot of the functions of the Microsoft 365 stack. You've got your, your Outlook, and you've got your Excel, being able to work on collaboratively with your documents and the things you do on a regular day-to-day -day basis. So Teams, not just collaboration, is not, it's more than just chat and video, okay? You've got the document collaboration. You've got the information security and governance. You've got room, uh, information security and governance. And I want to just take a second here how many people have an information security and governance plan in place? One. Okay. I'm one. shaking in my boots right you now. Wait, my, my sandals. Okay. Yep. Just so you know, just so you know, Microsoft Teams has the ability to keep track of the data that you do have, plan for how it should be put in place, as well as being able to manage the flow of that data within your company, where it moves, how it moves, does it go in and out of your company? Teams has that ability with the, just the documents even that you're storing. So, How many of you are in a regulated industry? Yeah? How many of you have to worry about GDPR? Wrong answer. You all have to worry about GDPR because you never know where your customer comes from, right? That's the government data protection regulation from Europe. You too can get fines, fees, and penalties for that. Not sure if you're aware of that. Um, but how many of you are able to send credit cards via Teams and social security numbers? It's okay to be honest. I have prizes, if you're honest. Okay? <laughs> Here, you get the hat. <laughs> So when Dude, you I'm so chasing you down for that hat at work. <laughs> when you I'm think about you that hat. when you think about Microsoft Teams, you can actually block security, social security numbers, credit cards, personal addresses. So if somebody were to be sending that back and forth, it would pop up and say, "Oh, sorry, you can't do that." Okay? Yeah. Yep. So you can protect people's information. How many of you work in education? Anybody? You can even block words of bullying. I mean, that's how powerful the platform is if you are in education. So, and then in addition, a lot of the fun things that are even more uh, widespread, we have things of the room collaboration. We have a room kit set up over here. Uh, a lot of you have, uh, have been doing video meetings and so forth uh, during this last year and even for longer, but now it's becoming really, really popular to have kits in the rooms to bring people closer together in the new normal, in the hybrid work environment. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, you know, yeah, we've also got calling, which is a new feature that that's not actually new. It's actually been around for quite some time. But now they've taken, okay, we've got Teams. We've got it on the desktop. What else can we do with this, uh, this video collaboration? Oh, hey, wait, why don't we collaborate the way we've always been doing it, which is by phone. Mm -hmm. Well, we can now use phone calling as part of Microsoft Teams. And, and okay. Video and chat. Video chat. Yep. Chat and video. And what's so cool is you can be on any device, any place, anywhere in the world and be on Microsoft Teams. I was in the Gambia, West Africa, taking a phone call, no internet, just using data, and my video quality was perfect. And just imagine, if you work for a company from a voice perspective, which we're gonna dive into a, more in a little bit, um, you can actually eliminate the need for a cell phone number. You can have Teams on here, everything is safe, secure, and encrypted, and you're gonna be able to um, track your company's usage on Teams. So if you have sales teams that use Teams, you're actually gonna be able to make sure they're making those phone calls, which is kind of nice as well. And who doesn't like to make sure that your revenue is actually where it needs to go because your people are working for you? Yep. Absolutely. Okay, so we just wanted a quick touch on a few things, and I had some things here, but I know Abby wanted to do the demo on the actual Microsoft Teams client. Can we get kind of closer up here to the Teams on the whiteboard? Not whiteboard, sorry. Um, excuse me? Ex Seriously? Yes. Really? You're done. Bye. Just kidding. <laughs> 
Microsoft Teams is so cool. So I'll be traveling. I live in Fargo, believe it or not, and I will be going to go get my kids from school, but I'll be on a call. And so I can actually go on my call. I can add my device, and it's super easy to do, and you're going to be able to see the flexibility of it. So you can see in this meeting here, let's see if it pops back out. It's not going to pop back out on me. Um, you can actually see that I'm able to join that call. So if I were to turn on my volume, my camera, and I think I did it without adding it, but I'm going to be able to hear it seamlessly, and nobody on the call is going to even know that that happened. Um, I've worked on my hub. Oh, you can actually see me now. Well, not really, but you can see it's right there. So that's kind of cool from that perspective. Okay. So Microsoft Teams, this is the meeting environment. David, can you go ahead and log in for me? Make sure to do the volume thing so that we don't hear that really annoying stuff. But let's see your mug, because you have a handsome mug. Okay. Pop it in. Yep. Okay. So in this Teams meeting, we are able to do a bunch of different things. And this is the web version of Teams. So even if you don't have it on your desktop application, your clients are going to be able to log into this as well for a seamless experience. Okay. They don't need to have a meeting um, invite like this. Oh, goodness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're a little You close. said I was handsome. Come on. <laughs> Most days. Okay. All right. Just kidding. But in here, we have the ability in the, this version to do a bunch of different things. And so we can actually share our screen. <laughs> you left me, but I'm able I to. I turned it off on purpose. <laughs> I'm able to share my desktop so I can actually share information quite easily with my participants in the meeting. And so you can see I can actually share this whole monitor here. I'm going to go ahead and click share. And then you're going to be able to tell that I'm sharing because there'll be a red box around it um, when you're on your desktop. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click, quit sharing. I'm also able to do a bunch of different things. So how many of you, when you're in a meeting and you're having technical difficulties to switch between your camera and things like that, can't find it? Right? You actually can change your device settings here. So you can switch between your speakers, your microphone, and your camera as well. In my home office, I have three cameras. So depending on what screen I'm at, I'm always looking forward at whomever I'm speaking with. Okay. You also have the ability in here to go into large gallery preview. So if we had 49 or more people, we're going to be able to see everybody. Now, if you're doing company meetings, this is really nice. Microsoft's advancements have made it that once you're in this environment, you can actually scroll over so you can see everybody who's on camera. You're no longer allowed to hide. That's kind of cool from that perspective. We can also go into together mode. They're going to make me do this all by myself, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> kind of loses the pizzazz. But when we're in together mode, and yeah, you're me, you... There <laughs> I am. Hi. Yes. Hey. You're, you're able to see together mode. <laughs> And it's so fun. That's terrible. <laughs> That's terrible. Oh my gosh. You can actually change the together mode on your phone now Bad too. Wi -Fi. So the mobile capability is really nice. Um, but let's say you work for a company and you want to use your company atmosphere. You can build a together mode just for your company. So if you want to have coffee together or things like that, you can still be working together even though you might be miles apart. Okay? Okay, bye, David. You can go off camera now. I'm kind of getting scared. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at a couple other things as well. How many of you have reoccurring meetings that happen week after week? Okay, so how many of you use the reoccurring meeting functionality in Teams? Yeah, you like it? So what's really awesome about it is when we have a reoccurring meeting, you can actually do meeting notes. And you can do it anyways, because those meets are, meeting notes are going to follow you. But you can take your meeting notes here, and then week after week, you're going to go back and know what you spoke about. Okay? Plus, if you attach documents here, we're just going to call it demo. Here, you're going to put your notes in here. And they actually save in a wiki. So if you went to wiki.microsoft.com, you're going to be able to find all of them there. Okay? But these will, these will follow you. The other good thing is, how many of you actually collaborate in Microsoft Teams? Meaning PowerPoint, Word, Excel, document stuff all at the same time? You keep shaking your head. You get the t-shirt for like a small child or your dog or pet. It could be like a perfect Halloween costume, okay? So here you go. <laughs> so that's kind of cool too, right? Because you get to save time. How many of you still send email back and forth with documents in it? 
Raise your hand. Yep. Don't do it anymore. Seriously, stop right now. You're filling up your inbox, okay? When you think about Microsoft Teams, everything internally should happen in Teams, okay? It's a hard change. But when you can do that and work on documents at the same time, you are going to save an hour per day per person in your organization. It is proven. If you are a 100C company, that's 100 hours per day, 500 hours per week, 2,000 hours per month. How much money could you make on other projects by being more effective? It's a lot of money. Plus, you're going to know exactly when people work on those documents, and you're going to see the changes real time. Okay, that's pretty cool. So we're going to show you that as well. Looks like there's a question. Did you type a question? Nope, you did. You call them Microsoft. Yeah, thanks for apologizing. You might be in my good graces by the time we're done. Okay. 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 So here's the <laughs> chat functionality. What's really cool about this chat functionality is you can actually type like you're in a Word document. You're going to be able to change the spelling, know when everything is happening there. You can even cause a sense of urgency. Now, there's an important button, which you can see right here, and there's the urgent button. Now, when you do the urgent button, it will ping that person every two minutes for 20 minutes until they answer your ping. Be nice, be kind, don't get fired, that's my rules. Mm. But let's say you have manufacturing as your company, okay? And something goes wrong on the plant floor, and your frontline workers have Microsoft Teams. A machine broke down, somebody got hurt, you can't get somebody over there, there's a fire, something happens, this button has saved lives. Honestly, think about medical, same thing. It's going to ping them and annoy the crap out of them until they answer, okay, to be quite honest. So this plays a really important role in your organization. You also have the ability here to attach a document. I don't have one on the hub here, um, but I can upload it from my computer. We're gonna be able to collaborate in that fashion. And if you like to have fun, you can kind of do the emojis, the GIFs, um, and things like that. So let's go ahead and do the first one, sorry. Oh, she's here for the booze. I hope, I'm not, <laughs> I hope you don't boo me, so from that perspective. Uh, um, and does anybody know how many Microsoft Teams apps there are? Raise your hand with guesses. A lot, a lot is not a great answer, Gary. Keep going. Keep going. 20, Lower. <laughs> did, you, did, you, did you bing it? No, there's a little over 2,000 apps. And what's so cool, good answer though, is every single app that's in there has to be certified by Microsoft. So when you're using it in your organization, you know it's safe and secure, okay? Now, with this Teams meeting environment, I'm gonna come over here and show the participants list. There's a couple other cool things that just happened. Does anybody use the four letter word that we shall not name that starts with Z? It's a really bad swear word. You use Zoom. Okay, we're totally changing you during this presentation. But um, like, uh, Zoom just had to pay $85 million in fines, fees, and penalties, okay? Ingram Micro, we're a multi-billion dollar company. We let Zoom go because they're not safe, secure, and encrypted. All of the data that happens in Zoom is given to China. So imagine having your child sit at Fargo Public Schools meeting, and they're on Zoom, and China gets to see your meeting notes, your kids on camera, everything. How scary is that, right? Well, with Teams, knowing it's safe, secure, and encrypted, never been hacked that I know of. Zoom, have you guys seen the lawyer that was kind of totally hacked and made a fool of? We don't do that at Microsoft. So in here, we can actually, if, David was in here, and he oh. was embarrassing himself like he was earlier. Mm. I could actually go on to him, click the camera, and I could enable and disable his camera. I'm going to save him grace, okay? No going to the bathroom doing a meeting because I'm gonna save you, David, okay? Because that happens a lot on the four letter word we shall not name. Um, anyways, but when we come in here, I can also disable mics, okay? So if you're having a company-wide meeting and people are talking, 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 you can actually take that functionality away, okay? What's also really cool about all of this is up here on this three little dot, can't see it right now, but on my machine I would be able to, you can now lock the meeting. Once everybody is there, nobody else is allowed back in or allowed in. They can't forward it or anything along those lines. 
Plus, if I were to remove David from this meeting, I remove him, he can't come back in. He's gone. Bye. See you later. Okay? So that's really nice because you're protecting your company assets. If you see somebody who's anonymous, always ask who they are. It's okay. You want to make sure you're safe and secure there. You can also move people to attendees. So if I were to make him an attendee, I'm going to change your role so you can't take over on me. Oh, sorry. I disconnected. It's okay. Now you left me. But I'm now good. that he's an attendee, he's not going to be able to actually come in here. I can actually ask no, Andy and or ask um, Just, David to join. It. I'm calling you. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you can bring people Answer. in on the fly as there well. There we go. Okay. Kind of cool from that perspective. So there's a ton of things that can happen in the meetings environment. Mm -hmm. And the newest, coolest thing, does anybody know what it is that happened with Teams meetings? We're going to show you that in a minute. Oh. Great call out. But the five minute mark, how many of you like to end a meeting early? Everybody should raise their hand on that one, right? So that gives you the five minute mark so you can wrap up your agenda. It's my favorite. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, we have five minutes left. Is there anything I can help you with? And then usually you get two minutes to go use the restroom or whatever, grab your coffee. Yep. Cool. So go ahead. All right. So yeah, we definitely want to show that uh, the whiteboard function. That's you want me to do it right now? Uh, let's look. We got to move on one second. Okay, I'll bring it up and you yep. go. Do you bring the it up side. and I'll yep. move on. Let's go back to the. All right. Oh, you know what? Go ahead and finish that. We're on to the next. Are you sure? Yes. Go. We okay. Got, we got. We're at one twenty-two. We haven't. We've almost had a half an hour. Okay. I know. We're doing good. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. Whiteboard's off. Awesome. Whiteboard. Yes. So, how many of you use a like old school whiteboard at work? Yep, okay, and, but some of you still work hard red, so you're using paper and pen probably at your desk kind of a thing. Well, with Whiteboard, and you can see I was doing some planning with Network Center here. I'm just gonna pull it up with permission of them. These whiteboards stay with you. So when you actually are in a Microsoft Teams meeting and you pull up the whiteboard functionality, so if we were to actually come to chat here, you can see that this is my Teams meeting link here. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this over. Maybe. Well, here up at the top, I could do a whiteboard, right? So I'm going to go ahead and load this whiteboard. My whiteboard is here. Once that pops up, it's going to take a second. I can go ahead and actually do a whiteboard. So I'm just going to write hello. I'm going to go ahead and put a note in there. I'm going to bring it down. I can pull it over. There's just really a ton that I'm going to be able to do. I'm just going to write two on there for now. OK, enter, move this down, and then move it just because I'm not all the way across. There we go. It's not letting me. But when I do that, and I actually move it over, <laughs> I'm struggling. I'm on the struggle bus right now. Here, here is the Teams meeting link. So that follows me there. OK, boom and yeah. boom, so, any device. So yeah, really great for uh, people like myself when I'm out there and I'm doing presentations and whatever, and I have a whiteboard. I like, to, I like to whiteboard things and just draw them out and design them. Problem is, I don't know if you're guilty of this like me, but I like to take out my phone. Like, I, I designed this great thing, and crap, now what do I do? I take my phone out, and I take a picture of it. Well, this, if I'm designing it in white Teams whiteboard, I can literally take that whiteboard with me anywhere. I can modify it, print it, bring it back up again if necessary. So that's one of the biggest benefits. Yep, and then when I'm on here, it's on my cell phone. So everything is following me between my iPad, my cell phone, my Surface, my computer. Again, anytime, any place. If you have Microsoft Teams right now or on Microsoft 365, download the Microsoft suite onto your phone. And yep. then everything it's... connects it because it all talks to each other from that perspective. Yep. Okay, great call out. All right. Yep. All right. Uh... Wanna move, ready to move on? Yeah, do you keep going and do you want me to do the Teams and Channel demo part of it or? Uh, we already talked about it. It's okay, go ahead. Yeah. I'm going to call We're gonna move on to collaboration, room, room collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, okay, we've got, so how many people here have Teams rooms in their offices? Two, three. Uh, so the rooms are basically the video, the video kits. You see one over here. This is a smaller unit. And the Teams rooms, as you might expect, they're designed to use for a hybrid workforce to allow people to be 
at home, at the office, but then also have the conference room as part of the deal. Uh, they allow, you know, crisp audio, but the biggest thing that they allow is the one-touch join. I don't know how many people have had this experience where they want to go and have a conference, they go in, and it's, who knows how to run this thing? You know, who, who do I get? Yeah. Three calls today? Yeah. So, who, who, do I, who do I get to run this thing? Yep. The one thing, all of the teams, all of the team systems are designed with one-touch join in mind. So, anytime you schedule a team's meeting, comes up and says, hey, we got a meeting right now. Big button, join. You join it, you're on. That's it. Mm -hmm. The only thing you might have, to, might have to do, some of them even have this function built in, you might have to turn the TV on. I don't know. Some of them, we just leave the TV on all the time, and it automatically goes on and off. So that's the only other thing I can say about that. OK. Um, Wireless or wired content sharing, depending on the model, of course. Some of them you can do wireless content sharing. You have a little dongle you'll plug into your laptop, and it shares the information. Again, none of this having cables run all over the, all over the table. Although there are some that have a pad of, I'm going to step over here, that have the, the desktop unit. Whoa, that's bad. The desktop unit that goes on the conference table will have a small cable coming out of it so you can hook a laptop to it. But a lot of the newer ones are coming out with wireless content sharing. Mm -hmm. You can also have multiple screens. With Microsoft Teams kits, they have one screen for, well, in the default configuration, one screen for the people, the other screen for the content that you're sharing. Now, there are settings in certain systems where you can do all the participants on all the screens. Okay. It also does, certain ones do presenter follow. This is, it can be fun and it can be annoying, but it is, I personally think it's a geeky, cool feature where you could be standing in the room and do this and the camera will follow. Also, auto camera adjustment. So if you ever sat down in a big conference room and you're the only person in that conference, it'll auto focus it down to just you. If two more people come in, it'll auto focus it wider. And on top of that, if you're writing on a whiteboard, there's some systems that will also make you invisible so you can see the yes. content behind. Yep. Logitech That's, Scribe is yes. a really good one. So cool. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So um, another one, another idea. Oop, wrong button. Another great concept. Buy one platform, use multiple. How many people knew? How many, how many uh, platforms can I use with a Microsoft, Microsoft Teams room system? How many different, anybody know the answer? There's another question, Abby, another uh, prize question. Oh. Yeah. How many different platforms can I use? Anybody know? No, not all. That'd be awesome, but no, it's not all. I'll give you a hint, it's three. There's three of them. Oh. First one is Teams. Second one is he who shall not be named, Zoom. WebEx. WebEx, yeah. It'll do all three. The caveat is it has to be a, uh, there's two types of room kits, and that's what they're Windows. One is Windows based, one is Android based. This one here happens to be Android based. Some of the, the other systems are Windows based. If they're Windows based, they can do all three. And you pay pretty much buy one platform, use multiple. You're not hardware locked into one platform. We have a try and buy program too for 60 days. So basically we'll send out a whole room kit for you for free. You get to try it. If you like it, you keep it. If you don't like it, you mail it back. Yep. And so if that's something that you guys are looking into to really expand in your businesses, it's a great opportunity there. Yep. And so here's you know, a couple of examples. And as, as you can see, we have the, the uh, Surface Hub 2S here. We have that unit there, the A-Link uh, A20 it's called. The one over on the right is from Polycom, or now Poly as they're known. And then the bottom one is from uh, Logitech. This is a very large room system. That's probably a small room, and that's a medium room system. So just kind of a wide, varied array. And these are just three, well, four. This is a unique device, kind of a huddle room and a whiteboarding device, but also a collaboration device. This, this kind of falls into its own category, whereas these are specifically room devices. The Surface Hub is so cool. I actually have them in my home office at home. I love it. <laughs> And uh, what's really neat is that if you have like an open concept office, this can be moved to like little mm. spaces within your organization to be able to work um, versus having a conference room for yeah. it. That thing in the middle there down there is a battery. It's actually yep. a APC UPS. You, so you can roll it around. You could be doing something, hey, let's go grab so-and-so and wheel it over to their, their yep. office. 
So um, in addition to this, we talked about the accessories. Um, you can see here we have certain, you can do small huddle rooms with cameras and you have speakerphones. This is the wireless sharing piece I was talking about. It's USB. I don't know if you can see that, but it's literally you plug it in, wirelessly shares. There's the uh, whiteboard Logitech Scribe. It goes above a whiteboard and you could be drawing on the whiteboard and your arm is clear. You see a very slight shadow of it, just so you can see people are drawing, but it's very nice. And then that goes right into the uh, Microsoft whiteboard. Wireless microphones. And then this one, this is my personal favorite. It's right here, I have a demo of it. This one? No, this one, right here. Oh. This, uh, this unit is the, um, it's the A-Link room panel, it's called. And the room panel is just what it sounds like. It's to tell you whether or not uh, you have this mounted outside your room. And it tells you whether or not uh, the room is available. Right now you can see there's green lights on both sides. And it says in big letters, available. Now, uh, in many cases, you, can, you have rooms, but they're all scheduled by somebody, or you have to go into a program to look to see if a room is available. No, this has the room calendar right on it. As well as, if it's available right now, and I need to go in and have a quick meeting, I can just go ahead and hit reserve, and it says, for how long? Uh, let's go ahead and, I don't need it for that long, so it's 1.45, let's say, from now, hit reserve. Okay, and now, lights change, it's my meeting. Now, one caveat, it doesn't let me, let it say it's me, but again, this is for quick grabbing it. If the room was actually scheduled by somebody, these would be red. Like if it was scheduled by somebody on the outside, or, uh, or by myself, whatever. The room was pre-scheduled, I should say, a better way of saying it. Mm -hmm. Then these would be red. Now, come over here, and it takes 30 seconds to update, but I'm just gonna refresh it. There. See, we get an auto Teams meeting. Like it automatically creates a Teams meeting for me. Not just like, a, like I reserved the room. I actually made an entire Teams meeting setup. So I want to have a virtual video conference. I did it with one button push. Okay. Now I come over here and I do one button push to start the meeting. There we go. We're in the meeting. Okay. And I can go here and I can invite... Go ahead and invite myself. There we go. There we go. And as long as they're in your gal or your account list or part of your um, Outlook, you're going to be able to invite those people to that call. Your global address list is your gal. So that was starting a Reserving a room, starting a meeting, and I hit, I tapped it once, twice. That was it. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to plug anything in. I didn't have to do anything. And this is mounted. It'll mount to glass, wood, metal. Requires PoE, runs on one cable. Very simple, very easy to use. The other thing, I'm going to cast dispersions here for a moment. Oh, me. Being that Abby and I are the, we're very passionate about Microsoft Teams, I'm going to cast dispersions on a certain vendor, a uh, certain, how, how do I put it? We already talked about Zoom. Let's talk about the other one. Okay. The other one that's expensive. Let's just leave it at that. Um, these systems are relatively inexpensive, at least a third the cost of a typical system of the other vendor. I'm just going to leave it like that. The one difference, though, also is that these... Uh, yeah, and that's in terms of their price point, really. That's where they're one of their other leads. They multifunction, much lower price point. And for the hub, too, I actually have mine set up as a Windows 10 machine, not a Teams meetings rooms machine. So it's my computer. And so I can actually turn around. I'm able to do all of my work on my hub, including saving documents like it's my desktop. And so if you do work from home and you need a bigger kind of aspect to your life, um, you're able to do that as well. So you can set up either as a Teams meeting room solution or a Windows 10, soon to be Windows 11 machine, which has been released in October. Yeah. Okay, let's quickly move on because I know we're going to have a lot of questions at the end. Yeah, so. this is my favorite part. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> Teams calling. How many people knew? How many people are using Teams calling right now? A couple of you. Okay, cool. How, how many, many of you still have on prem telephony systems? Okay. Cool. Very cool. How many people are actually planning on moving to Teams calling? Anybody? Yeah, maybe. Cool. Yeah. 
Very cool. Um, if this is even of interest to you, this team's adding calling. I've been doing telephony for 20 years. Uh, and Microsoft had a phone system way back when, and they had abandoned it. It's called Office Communication Server. Has anybody ever played with Office Communication Server? Yeah? I see you, like, you feel probably about the same way about it as I did. 12 servers for 10 phones. Yeah. <laughs> no, this ain't that. This, this works extremely smoothly, extremely nicely. It works very well. I, otherwise, I wouldn't have like, been a proponent of it. Um, the thing about it is essentially is what it sounds like. It's Microsoft Teams being able to make phone calls. That's really what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. It allows us to have connections into a fully functioning phone system, no, but not just the people being able to make phone calls. People forget about, okay, yeah, I can make a phone call, but what about the other pieces? The other pieces, things like, you know, you've got auto attendance, cues, and some of the extra detailed programming that goes along with a phone system. Like, you know, thank you for calling such and such a company. To, you know, those pieces make more of a phone system than just being able to make a phone call. Because your cell phone can make phone calls, right? But it's not a phone system. That's where the difference comes into play. Uh, so. All PBX functions, it does voicemail, park, transfer, auto attendance, queues, are all included for free with the MS Teams calling license. So you get everything that the Teams phone system will do is included with the license. Mm -hmm. so, What's important to know about that too, and sorry to interrupt, no, is no worries. You know, on-prem telephony systems, we're seeing that when they move to the cloud, they're saving about 67%, and who doesn't mm -hmm. like to save money, right? I've also seen, being in my role, um, that a lot of companies are transferring on-prem systems to their cell phones and having to pay a cell phone stipend, especially during the pandemic. And so being set up for future crises, I hate to state that, mm -hmm. it's it beneficial for you as your company because you're going to actually be able to take a phone call on your cell phone through the Teams app, mm -hmm. and your employee will never have to give away their cell phone number again and it's secure and encrypted directly on here. Um, when I, pre-COVID, would be on an airplane or flying wherever in the world, um, this is the only way I would work. And all my documents are in Teams or OneDrive in the cloud, so I never even had to open up my laptop, and that's pretty nice too. Yeah. Should we show them how it works? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, let me just go through these couple things here. We pretty much said these already. Oh, sorry, I always jump ahead, I get No, 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 it's all right, because yeah. we get through the PowerPoint faster. PowerPoint's kind of boring. Yeah. We're much more entertaining. Um, <laughs> fast adoption and implementation, I do want to hit that real quick. Um, yeah. Implementing Teams calling is, you've already got, if you've already got Teams implemented, 365 implemented, adding a phone system, how many people have been through a phone system implementation? Yeah, it's fun, right? It's like going to the dentist and getting four root canals. Pretty fun. Uh, Teams is literally, you've already got it. All you're doing is adding a few features to, to users, mm -hmm. and they've already got it on their desktop. Their desktop client updates automatically with their phone number. They, boom, got it. That's it. The only hard part is with the stuff, the phones and the headsets and the hardware and the, that. But turning on phones and calling and all that is literally, okay, you can make phone calls now. So... And, right. the, and the hard stuff isn't even that hard because no. what I would do is if you're looking to move to a phone system like Teams, um, is do a company survey because 90% of the time, people want to move away from this. Mm -hmm. They can use a job or puck. They can talk through their computer now. They can even use their Apple AirPods. Yep. And so just to be able to think about cost reduction, that's a great thing too. One last little thing and then we'll get on to the demo. Uh, uses industry-leading AI for voice, you know, the Azure AI you can actually talk to, for the, um, for the auto attendants, when the people call in and say, I'd like to talk to sales, it actually can use natural conversational speech to talk to, like the high dollar call center softwares have, you know, the million dollar call centers have, you can have for any small business now because it, has, it uses the full power of the Azure stack for the AI behind it. So you can say, oh, so you can say, uh, I'd like to talk to sales about my car, whatever, and it'll go, let me, let me, you know, then it'll transfer you to sales. Uh, I'd like, and it'll recognize the terms that you put in place in the, um, in the menus. Another fun one is the text-to-speech. Now, before, with phone systems, you have to record <laughs> greetings. And that takes time, and it's a pain in the butt. And whoever recorded the greetings, if they leave the company, you've got to have somebody else record the greeting, and it's just it's a pain. 
The text-to-speech is done also through the AI, and it's a very natural conversational language. It's, you type it out, and you think, oh, it's going to sound like the computer voice from Macintosh, you know, thank you for calling. No, it's not like that. It's very natural. It also does accents. I found this out the hard way. So, mind your funny story, got to digress. I'm from a very Norwegian family, so much so that I learned Norwegian when I was like eight. Like the full language, I can speak it and write it and everything else. And so I thought, well, let me see if it does a good Norwegian. So I flipped the language slider to Norwegian. But I typed in English, misthinking that it was going to translate the English to a Norwegian auto attendant. What it did was, it said, like I said, thank you for calling. Um, instead of it saying thank you for calling, it's, it said, thank you for calling. You know, it did the, the whole Norwegian accent <laughs> thing. So it sounded like my grandmother saying thank you for calling. So, but, it, but isn't that funny for an AI to do that? Isn't that kind of interesting? So, at any rate. So, and finally, you can use Microsoft as your phone provider, or you can bring your own mm -hmm. phone company. More on that later. Yeah, and it's really inexpensive if you're under 300 users. It's only $15 a user per month, and that includes 3,000 minutes pooled for your whole company. Um, also, one other thing before I do the demo that I want to call out is if you like to have a dial-in number for your, for your team's meetings, it's free now. And so if you don't have that free license yet, make sure you talk to Network Center about it, and it's going to be free forever. And so everybody in your company can now have a dial-in phone number, so make sure to take advantage of that as well. Okay, so this is the Teams calling platform in the web. Okay, on your desktop it looks a little bit different. But here, I can actually do Teams to Teams calling for free. I know that people buy status if they're free, busy, away from their desk. So that's nice, you're probably already utilizing that if you're on the platform. But I can come in here and I can actually call my cell phone off of a hub. So this is kind of cool. And let's see if it's set up. It's calling. It's going to make a weird noise. But here I am, right? So I can do it directly from here, and it's going to talk to me badly. But we're going to go ahead and turn that off. So it's really nice from that perspective to be able to make those phone calls. Um, here you see your history, outgoing, how long it was. There's call reporting that you can pull as well. Um, you can see your missed calls with the new interface, which is all here. You're going to be able to see your incoming. And you're going to be able to see your voicemail as well. Um, I remember back in the Skype for Business days when it did voicemail, the voicemails were horrible. I once had one, hi, this is Brian calling from Psychopath University, and I was losing it, right? I'm here to talk about your murder. Like, I'm not kidding. That's what it talked about. But here, it comes to be so nice and clear, and then it'll actually go to your Outlook so that you're able to look at it from there. You can return the phone call directly from your Outlook because it's tied to Teams, or you can just come in here and click on it. Up here as well, you have your contacts, right? So you are able to add your contacts here. Um, on the regular desktop version, you can create calling trees, groups, etc. And then if we come back over to the phone system, you can actually come down here and click Do Not Forward. Forward to voicemail, you have more settings to where you're able to set up, so let's say you're the CEO of the company um, and you want to make sure your assistant helps you, you can forward the calls directly to your assistant from that perspective as well. Um, you can figure your voicemail here and you can even um, do your dialer or what your ring is going to sound like. Okay? Do we have any, oh, and you can see the captions and transcripts is nice as well. Questions. We have one minute, but we are, we're happy to stay to a 15-minute break. There's a lot. Yeah, if you want a follow-up demo, let's do it. We're, we're gonna so actually going to bring yeah. a lot of this stuff over to our booth. Huh? Yes, there are, there are call analytics in the admin portal, so you're able to see when calls were made, who made those calls. Um, Microsoft Teams actually drives down to usage, so who's using chat, meetings, mm. Teams, functionality like that, so you'll be able to see that. Yeah, yeah. Also, and just as an add-on, there's also add-ons for Power, uh, Power BI, I believe, so yep. you can go in and get really detailed if you need to. Absolutely. There's, there's canned, and then there's more. Um, go ahead. <laughs> great, very great question. cool. Um, specific, there's a little more specificity to that question, but it actually will do things with like moving. So if you're talking about E911's functionality, uh, you can actually diagram your entire network so that it knows exactly where you are. Uh, there's a function here called locations where you can say, 
hey, I'm connected to this network port or this Wi-Fi access point, and therefore I know that you're in this room, in this building, and I'm going to mm -hmm. send the emergency services. Even remote. Like if you have frontline yeah. workers in the field on their cell phone, you're going to know exactly where they are if there's an emergency. Yeah. Yep. So, but it does depend on there, there's certain, you know, please see the list of disclaimers. Okay. But, there's, but yes, it actually is in this area. Very cool. Any other questions? If you want to see a follow-up demo, we can do the full demo for you because there's automation too. There's and there's a lot of we have yeah. all the phones over here. We're going to bring this hardware and equipment over to the to our booth so we can do some of these demos for you guys live if you want to see the actual stuff. Yeah. The last question gets to the Microsoft Teams amazing water bottle. Anybody else have a question? Oh, nope, we got a question oh, over go here. Go ahead. Yeah. They are not. They are not. No, you have to have a specific version. Ah, wait, oh, wait. The, however, we were just talking about this. Remember the T4 series? Oh, yeah. So um, they have just announced that supposedly uh, as in November, they will be releasing Microsoft SIP gateway services, which means the T4 series and any SIP phone. Mm -hmm. Well, Hmm. Microsoft says they will only support certain SIP models, da 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 da. But you and I both know if you support SIP, you support SIP. Yeah. So don't throw away your old phones because it's going to work. Right. That yep. as of that, but that's been an, yep. hasn't been like officially released yet. That's an announcement for November. That answer your question. Yep. All right. Any questions? Anything else? Thank you guys so much. It was fun. Well, thanks, guys. So, thanks. <laughs>